Welcome to the GCN Tech Show and a happy new year. This week we've got a new track bike, a new gravel bike and some super lightweight tech too. Plus our predictions for what's going to happen in the world of bike tech in 2020. Oh yes. So that's 2019 done. 2020. Firstly, there can't be any more gravel bikes launched this year. I mean, surely they were every single gravel bike was launched last year. Wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> One thing though is, could 2020 be a year for a new Shimano Dual Ace? Because, like, history repeats itself. History tells us that all the other Dual Aces tend to have a four year development cycle, meaning that we see one every four years, and 2020 happens to be four years since the last one, so. I mean, we've not seen or heard anything yet, but we're gonna keep our eyes peeled. Yeah, that's right. Pop around, you know, mechanics, trucks at races and see what we can find. Yeah. Uh, something else I think that's gonna be big in 2020 is gotta be tubeless tires. Now we have already seen riders using them a little bit in races in 2019 and also before. Tony Martin, he won, actually that was with a clincher tire, wasn't the tubeless. But anyway, tubeless tires have been used to victory last year. Old news, Fabio Jakobsen won a stage at the Tour of California. Uh, Alexander Kristoff, yeah, Gent Revelchen as well. So tubeless tyres, I reckon, are going to make a bit of an impact in 2020. Yeah, I mean, we've seen them last season using them a lot in front wheels on time trials, mm. not in rear wheels. The main reason for that, as, as far as we can ascertain, is because there aren't many um, wheel sponsors that have a tubeless compatible rear time trial disc at the moment, that's going to change, you think? Yeah, definitely. And I know it will because I saw a prototype at the Giro. Someone was using one. Yeah, what was it? Can't say. Oh. Uh, maybe swear and, uh, you know, doing a, an alliance and an oath and all <laughs> these sorts of uh, bits and pieces. And I can't tell you, I'm afraid, but one will come out in 2020. I think while tubeless tyres are definitely going to become more popular and we will see them in time trials. And I think amongst, you know, people like us riding around, mm. we're, we're going to use tubeless more and more. I still don't see the pros fully embracing them, especially in normal stage races. And that's because having spoken to the teams, they're aware that there is a rolling resistance benefit with tubeless and you can seal punctures with the sealant. But there's a couple of drawbacks which stop them using them. So one of them is they feel there's a safety element. So in a pro race, when you're on a descent, if you get a puncture, the tubular tire is deemed to be safer by the pros in, in terms that it stays on the rim and it's less likely to roll off uh, when it's flat. And the other thing is, is when you do get a flat on a tubular, you can actually kind of ride it um, and continue to ride it a little bit. And this is deemed to be better in terms of saving time. So you can continue to roll along and not lose as much ground on the rest of the peloton when you do get a puncture while your team car comes up and gives you a spare wheel. Hmm. So you can't really ride a flat clincher or tubeless tire. Yeah, the pros are probably the hardest people out there to convince to change because, well, they do it day in, day out. Hmm. Uh, something else then for 2020, indoor training. I've seen nothing to suggest that the growth of that will not continue its rise. Uh, I think like last year it was so popular and in fact Strava, the online ride sharing portal, if you like, they showed that uh, so far that 16% of rides were actually done on indoor trainers compared to in 2018, it was five and a half percent. Impressive stats. That's there. a massive, a massive leap, yeah. isn't it? Right, okay, uh, something else which is gonna gain traction are e-bikes yeah. in 2020. Yeah, both in terms of popularity as well as acceptance. Yeah, I might get one, yeah. Uh, I think they're actually great because they allow people who you know may not feel confident enough to go on group rides on a normal bike uh, to be able to go along now and I mean they, they were given a hard time in the past at space people thought oh you're on an e-bike you're cheating no there are a few people who do that but mm. the majority of people are not doing that so I just think they're a great great idea yeah I think we should try and build one on the channel mm. see if we can do like yeah. a backyard one oh, pretty, be good, pretty good with the old soldering iron so yeah, <laughs> give, it, give it a go um, yeah. I've got one big final prediction for 2020. All bikes in 2020 are finally going to conform to one single universal bottom bracket standard. No, it will not happen. Will it not? No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, if, to, if you're going to say that. Dare to dream, John. <laughs> if you're going to say that, then I'm going to say they're all going to have one universal derailleur hanger too. That's the amazing. dream. Bike manufacturers, that is what we really, really want in 2020. You heard it here first. 
Right, Hot Tech now, and Look have released a new track bike that's going to be used by the French Cycling Federation at the Tokyo Olympics. Yes, yeah, the Olympics arms race, hotting up oh, as we it. predicted. Well, this is the new T20 from Look, and it's said T20? to- T20? Yeah, like, like cricket, yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, it's said to replace the R96, which was Look's previous track bike, which you may recognise from previous Olympics, having been ridden to, well, loads of victories. Nice work indeed. And according to Look, the T20 is a whopping 800 grams lighter than the R96 bike. I mean, that is an awful lot. Mm. Uh, it's got uh, an 11% reduction in drag, and also it's 27% stiffer, or better power transfer, which is mm. good news when you've got uh, wattage bazooka monsters like Gregory Borge kicking out some serious power on the boards of a Velodrag. Yeah. Nice indeed, that. Yeah, it's cool. It's entirely made in Lux HQ in Nivers in France as well, which is pretty cool, because I've been to that factory, so that's pretty interesting to see that. Anyway, one of the things that's said to uh, help contribute to the improved stiffness on the bike is the special new integrated dropouts within the frame that are designed to work in conjunction with the new wheels, which come from Corima. So it's a sort of a two-part collaboration there to create the whole system of the wheels and where they, how they slot into the frame, which is interesting because that's also a gain that we've seen employed with the new Lotus Hope bike yeah. and, and the wheels and the dropouts on that as well. So clearly there's, you know, the, the engineers have spotted that there's a stiffness gain to be made there. And when these guys, they're so powerful, yeah. like they notice, you know, I mean, like uh, I spoke to guys from the, the GB Sprint team before, like Philip Hines and stuff. And one of the funny things is they actually keep a sort of bragging tally of uh, how many parts and bikes and stuff that they're actually able to break due to their extreme high power. So for these guys, this kind of gain of making the bike as stiff as possible is really important. Yeah, Heinz actually, he reckons he's got as much torque from a standing start as a supercar. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he, he told me that. Absolutely incredible. Uh, now that bike as well, it's gonna be available in a drop bar version, like we've already mentioned for the sprinters, but also importantly, ones which are suitable for the pursuit too. Lovely looking bit of kit. Mm. Right then, Portuguese company Gelu, I'm sure I've said that completely incorrectly, uh, have sent in this, the K3 saddle. Have a little look at that, Ollie. This is bonkers. Yeah, that is probably the world's lightest saddle. I can't think of anything which, I mean, yeah, all right, you can do that with any saddle. Hey? Uh, <laughs> it weighs though just 38 grams, which, I mean, if you lot could feel it through the, through the screen right now, you would be amazed. That it's, is insane. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel rideable, but it is. You know, I've seen videos of people riding on them. As you can see, it's nicely uh, cut away here in the middle to relieve any pressure. And we've also got some drilled out holes there too, and the rails there integrated in nicely. It does cost a fair bit though. How much? 495 euros. But, but if you're obsessed with making your bike super light, that is the length that people go to, isn't it? Let's face it. Right, one of the worst things about descending has to be the chill you get on your chest, especially after you get a bit of a sweat on during the ascent. And well, sometimes the jacket can be just a little bit too cumbersome, can't it? Yeah, also flaps around a bit as well, that slows you down. Yeah, so the folks at Albion have produced this, a chest yeah. protector. Wow. How cool is that? It looks like Action Man's duvet. Yeah, and it's probably, well, it is almost <laughs> action man sized as well. It's absolutely minuscule. But what, that goes down you, down there? Yeah, so pros, you know, traditionally, you still see it happen to them in uh, Grand Tours. Spectators at the side of the road hand out sheets of newspaper, they stuff it down their jersey, and then they head on down the descent. We don't have that pleasure, do we, on our rides, really? No, plus we, it's not very eco-friendly, is it? Unless you recycle the newspaper afterwards. I don't reckon they, or maybe they read it. Yeah, at the bottom. Maybe, yeah. um, but I, either way, I had one of these given to me, not not the one from Albion. Uh, nice it was from Nalini years ago. It was made of chamois. And mm -hmm. that thing was pretty cool. You just shoved it down there and it worked. But this is so, so neat because, see what Ollie's doing there? He's folding it. You don't have to fold up this bad boy. Instead, you can just scrumple it back into its own pocket inside. That's super cool. And well, it weighs nothing as well. Just like that saddle, it's really minimalistic. It can't weigh nothing. Well, well that's a lot. Right. Okay. I mean, matter has a weight. I mean, like hydrogen atoms, they don't weigh nothing. All right. It costs <laughs> £35, pounds, but a great bit of kit, that. Ideal. Stuff, look, that. look how small it is. Nothing. That is 
Uh, Ollie, that can't <laughs> just be nothing. <laughs> 35 pounds, lovely. Evil have just launched this. It's called the Shami Hagar, or is it Hagar? Yeah, we or don't know. It's H A G A R. Yeah, Hagar. I quite like that. Hagar. Shami Hagar. I don't. Well, either way, it mm. looks like a rigid mountain bike. Um, it, in it, well, it just kind of looks like it. That geometry would be ideally suited to, to riding proper, proper off road. Yeah, it looks so relaxed. It's the sort of thing you go on and you just be like, well, this is easy. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't, but... Yeah, maybe we'll get in for Doddy and, you know, send him off to a World Cup downhill, see if he can ride it. Yeah. Rather than stitching you up. Yeah. <laughs> Cha-ching! It's now time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit evidence of the upgrades that you've made to your bikes or equipment for a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN cap. And we have got a winner to announce, because a couple of weeks ago, we had two very hotly, uh, well, hot contenders, really, and the votes were very, very close. Just a quick recap then. It was between Jack and his uh, Marin old mountain bike into a gravel bike conversion, and Daniel with his TT bike into a drop bar conversion. Nice. And well, the winner was Jack, 56% of the votes. Probably the closest we've had for quite some time. So gravel beat TT. Gravel beat, well, basically a drop bar gravel bike, yeah, built beat the, the TT bike into a road bike. But yeah, anyway, get in touch with us on Facebook to arrange delivery of that cap. Well, wow. Both of them were very worthy contenders. They were. This week, going to battle then, we've got Dobler from Location Unknown, but Dobler had a project that took three months, a Cinelli Santiero. Uh, Cinelli, of course, known for their drop handlebar fame, more than flat bar. Uh, the frame was kicking about and Dobler did his business. Yeah, uh, apparently Dobler had this bike rebuilt with what they call a mullet-ish drivetrain. I think that means, it's, that means it's short at the front, long at the back. So yeah, mullet-ish drivetrain, a SRAM Eagle rear mech and cassette, and Sugino Mighty Cranks with a wolf tooth chain ring. Uh, shifting is taken care of by the Gevinale levers, a very interesting bit of kit, has to be said. Mm. Uh, those massive bars mm. are from Crust Bikes, and it's the towel rack model with a Velo orange stem, DT Swiss rim, Shimano hubs, and a Bush and Muller lighting rig. This is a big upgrade all round, and well, big, big bars. I mean that, I, I have to say, I love that finish. That kind of satin grey finish. Yeah. Won't stay like that for long. It but looks dead smart though. Yeah, it, it does. But that's the first contender, well, Dobler. Yes, Dobler, he's, he's got a battle on his hands because he's up from, uh, well, he's up against Robert Mays. Robert Mays has this Fausto copy frame from the 70s or 80s, he's not sure. Do we know? Maybe no. you know. Let us know yeah. in the comments. Robert doesn't know. And he's restored it to this beautiful bike, um, which he's put Shimano 105 on. He's also put some hologram wheels on there. Robert says that this restoration, now this is the big thing with this one. Yeah. It cost just 600 euros. Okay, right, well, let's have a look. There's the old, a bit blurry, that photo, yeah. wasn't it? He doesn't okay. have uh, Dobbler's photo No, skills. no, lots to be said there. Look at the original Drillium, though, oh, on those also, chain rings. Yeah, is that a... No, for a minute I thought it was an original Durace mech on there. Well, you know, a Durace mech from the early 90s, but it's definitely not. That looks wow. all right. Yeah, it's transformed that, hasn't it? Yeah. I said, oh, I like the chrome lugs. Just wish we had some more before. Interesting bar angle too. Yeah. Saddled very far forward on the rails. The, um, oh, something, something that is annoying me a little bit. Yeah. Mismatched tires. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, they like are. The Toya on the front. Yeah. Conti on the back. Yeah. That is Robert. Yeah, that's. We're that's not angry. We're just disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. But that's it. I mean, that's a. But do you know what? I, I, there's something about that bike I really job. like. Well, it's not up for us though. No, you can vote yeah. both here interactively on the screen or also on the app too. Robert yes. or Dobler? You decide. Right, now time for the bike vault. And you know the drill by now. We haven't changed it. Oh, no, 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 no. So if you've got a bike which you want to submit, you can use the uploader or better still use the app because that comes through to us in super fast digital time. Yeah, it's that's more likely to be featured if it comes through the app. Yeah, that's right. And if you get rated nice, well, you just get thumbs up from us, do you reckon? All right, yeah, okay. Yeah, and if you get super nice, <laughs> some of that. Right, okay, Ollie, who's the first one this week? Uh, first up this week, we have... Len Yang 
who's from a location unknown. That's a nice place. Though. Maybe they're a secret agent. Well, that's their uh, their David Kirk Kirk Frameworks. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It is with uh, Campagnolo Chorus 11 speed on there. Some nice DT Swiss wheels as well, and uh, Victoria tires finishing it off. What looks great about that is the shallow section wheels. Yes. Yeah, that is a, all right. That's not a, a retro bike or anything. This is a brand new modern bike, and it looks, I think, fantastic. Therefore, it's going to get super nice. The first yeah, super nice of 2020. Is it well, official? Yeah. Right. Uh, next up, we've got J Harvey 86. Again, location unknown. It's very important, uh, viewers, to actually include your location because yes. we love to know what corner of the globe you're from. Mm. Uh, this is J Harvey's Canyon Road Light. Look at that. Wow, someone's um, someone's discovered the old uh, HDR button on the yeah Photoshop. I, I mean, I mean HDR high dynamic range can look great, but like anything, I'm a you know I'm a big fan of it. But like anything, too much of anything can be a can be a bad thing. Yeah, and I think this is a classic example of just HDR pushed. Too far. It's, happy, it's happy New Year, Jay Harvey. Starting to look like a cartoon. Uh, your rear brake cable, you need to just ex like take it off and put a new piece on there, just where it joins uh, the caliper and leaves the actual boss on the frame because it's very, very short there and you could be getting poor braking. Compromises braking. Yeah, yeah, so just want to give you that little bit of a tip. Um, biggie, big, mate. Yeah, biggie, big. Uh, I mean, not matching bottles. This could have been an absolutely stellar. Photo. I mean, he's picked a nice location. Yeah. It's a nice bike. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What have we got next then? Um, we've got Adui. Yeah. I, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Adui. Adui. Anyway, yeah. Marina Bay. Uh, it's the cruise centre in Singapore. Lovely. Look at that massive ship behind him. Oh, look at it. Look at that. He's got a specialised SL6 with Shimano Ultegra R8000. EE brakes like those fancy. Oh, do we know his stuff? And uh, stuff. those Campagnolo Bora 150s as well. That's a cool bike. That is, isn't it? I mean, an oversized pulley wheel system of some sort. Yeah, that looks cool. Gold oh. chain. I always really like those um, those specialized paintwork. It's like sort of digital camo, but it's like saying I'm camouflaged, I'm digital camo. Yeah. But then. I'm not camouflaged because I've got a bright pink S-Works logo. Take that. Yeah. Take um, <laughs> and I think the, I said the Speedplay Pave pedals as well, isn't it? Yeah. Michelin Power tyres. You don't see big, Michelin big tyres that much anymore. I think it just it looks a really nice bike, doesn't it? No, it's just, I think that's a super yeah, nice. Yeah, I really like those those ones. Yeah. yeah nice. Do you want to bring it then? Is it your super nice? Uh, I'll do it next time. Okay. Yeah. Next time. Right, uh, now we've got Hannah, uh, Hannah Leidenbacher, uh, unknown location again. Um, mm. Or maybe Leidenbacher is a location, who knows. Uh, it's a Rosa I'm gonna, SL. I'm going to Google it. Okay. Uh, Pro Lady 2019, Shimano Ontegra R8000. Right, first up, we've got a cheeky bit of Celeste on this bike. You know I love a bit of Celeste. They're on the bar tape because that matches, of course, the inside of the forks as well as the rear stays. I think that's a really nice bike. And it's, is it grey or white? You still Google think Leidenbacher is a place. Okay, so it's obviously Hannah Leidenbacher. Yeah. Uh, is it grey or is it white, the frame? I think it's like an off. Is it like a off is whitey? It, I think it could be like moon dust. I think it's like an off whitey kind of colour. Yeah. And the grey from the bottle cages. On the tax cage, yeah, might be there, but I mean, it's it's nicely clean. The valves yeah. have been lined up. There's, an, there's the biggie smalls. It's a really nice looking bike, that. Yes, I'm. Um, I think that's. I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm saying it. Yeah. You, I reckon that is somewhere like the Canary Islands. Yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. I just recognise the, uh, the tiling. Mm, like maybe Tenerife or something. Yeah, like. something like that. Gran Canaria. Mm. Right, super nice, Hannah. Yeah. Happy New Year. Uh, right, who've got now? Now we've got Kichi, who's in London. Um, and that is an amazing bike. So amazing. Kichi has got a Cervelo RCA. There, now, was, there was only like 
a couple hundred of those made, weren't there? Yeah, less. not many of them. So yeah. they're not made anymore, are they? No, they, was, this was, was it 2015. Yeah, so this made. was a project by Cervelo to make like the ultimate lightweight bike using all the best carbon fiber techniques available. And they found that this could only be done in very small numbers in mm. Canada. And yep. <laughs> of all places. Yeah, well, that's yeah. where they're based. But yeah. like they, they couldn't do it in Taiwan or where most of their bikes are made. And so they could only make it at a very high cost in small numbers. Yeah. And the result is the RCA, which is a ridiculously light frame, yeah. a beautiful frame. There are not many of them, as John says. This build said to be 5.2 kilograms, um, probably helped by those outrageous Corama 47 MCC yeah. wheels. I love those. They're in one piece, aren't they? A bit like lightweight. Yeah, well, they have, the, they have those they have really thick carbon spokes. But, yeah. like, you know, obviously it's like a sort of, well, sort of five bladed design, but with doubled up spokes. But it's. Uh, and they're not UCI legal, are they, those? Because no, they've got like 10 is, spoke wheels. Yeah, two, four, six, eight, 10, two, yeah, 12. Yeah, so you've got to have 16, I think, minimum UCR, maybe 20, don't know. Uh, we've got THM cranks, SRAM red on there, the old 10 speed well, stuff. I super like that. That's was. just to make it really light, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's just a super. Yeah, this is just really showing light. off, really. MCFK THM. as well. Yeah. I mean, those are lightweight bottle cages, it looks like. A couple of cheeky Cervelo, uh, Cervelo testing bottles there, it looks like. Too. Well, they look like the bottle cages that we found at Eurobike that weighed about four grams. Ah, uh, from you know those, yeah, those, carbon those really ridiculous ones. Yeah. He's got his THM um, clavicular brakes. Do you know what? That, that's that's someone. Those right? Corama wheels, they were so. That's someone who's gone, I've got the nicest bike available to humanity. And so I don't need. I don't know if it is, but I don't need. No, this is what they're thinking. Oh right, okay. I don't need to play by the rules. Yeah. I can disregard. I'm bigger than the rules because my bike's so amazing. No one's bigger than the rules. I, no one's bigger than the rules. No. That's a nice. It's a nice bike. Mm. More bike vault next week. Kichi's coming for you. Bring it on. There we go. Another tech show in the bag. Another one done and dusted. Yeah, first one of 2020. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you do like our content and would like to support the channel, then please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon. And if you'd also like to go over to the GCN shop, we've got loads of goodies in store, including amazing hoodies. I'm a big fan of hoodies, especially in the winter time. Yeah, that's All right. Time. <laughs> and if you'd like to check out another video, this time, can we build a Tron bike? Well, click just down here.